Well, bless the Lord and thank God again for another session of Talks and Chats. We are so blessed to be here. It is a wonderful day. God has been good and he's been really working through these sessions. I'll tell you, we've been having some good chats, you know, uh, talking with different people in the body of Christ and uh, Zion Global Ministries, our congregation. And as we even get started here, I'm gonna say, please share this. Share this on YouTube, share it on Facebook, Instagram, however your social media works for you, share it. I think it's gonna be worthwhile. Somebody's gonna be helped somebody's going to be changed behind it. I believe somebody who might be even delivered behind this time that we're going to have together tonight as we sit down and talk with my girl here to my right, Brianna. She agreed to talk with me. I am so <laughs> thankful. I'm glad we were able to work it out and yeah. we could be together and talk tonight. You know, Pastor has been sharing uh, a new series on checking in. And uh, since he started that, we've had so many people that have so many burdens and uh, trials, tribulations, trauma, things that have happened in their past, things that have happened recent, um, that sometimes they just get buried. And so, you know, he has a bag over there, right? <laughs> and he's been pulling out different things, whether it's anxiety, it's, re you know, rejection, hurt, pain, failure, you know, all these different areas that people are struggling with but it's also stopping them from moving into their neck. So that's what we would really want to have a chat about. Um, I'll ask them a few questions. There's some things that I know that you can share, I believe, in your age group. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what generation they call it now. You know, it was millennial, it was X, X. Or Z, I don't know what are you, Z, X? I believe <laughs> that I am in that X last millennium it's like kind right of on that cusp, cusp. yeah oh, okay mm -hmm. okay <laughs> yeah so again without further ado i want you guys to welcome this is our family our zion global village our zion global family welcome brianna uh and thank you for being here thank okay. you for inviting me i'm excited uh, to have uh, this conversation truly blessed truly blessed i want you to just take us to kind of where you are right now and then we're going to do some backing up okay uh, what are you doing these days i know you're in cincinnati yeah Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's <interesting. laughs> so yeah i am back here in cincinnati um i am a behavioral therapist mm. at mount healthy elementary Wow. and so wow. i work with school aged children from eight to 12 years old. And so every day for six hours of the day, I teach social skills to them. Mm. Um, mm. These are your typical children that are the bad kids. Okay. Um, these are the rejects of the school. These are the kids I that, yeah, that um, the school just doesn't want to deal with, but they have that responsibility mm. to help them progress in a way. Mm -hmm. So they send them to our program. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't say where I work with, but um, it's it was formerly the Children's Home of Cincinnati, but okay. we merged with St. Al's, so now we are Best Point. Okay, Yeah. but it's embedded in the school system? Yeah, in the school correctly? system, okay. yes. So you're Correct. sitting inside of a school? Yes, sir, okay. yeah. Yeah. Now, do you select the children? Or are they selected, pre-selected? So the school selects the children. And again, these are typical kids that they're being suspended a lot or um, they, they have to, so there has to be some type of mental health criteria, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. that is um, d uh, conduct disorder or dysregulated mood disorder. Um, we do have some suicidal ideation, mm -hmm. um, depression. Um, and a little bit of anxiety, but for the most part, and, um, oh, and also some ADHD. Um, but for the most part, it, it's behavioral, so that's that conduct, that's that mood disorder where there's some defiance as well. So they, this shows up in the classroom. Yeah, it show, it's showing up in the classroom and it's affecting their academic learning. My God, mm -hmm. my God, this yeah. is so incredible because the timing is yeah. just, it really, it really yeah. is incredible because yeah. Pastor is now talking about mental health mm -hmm. and, and he's saying even this past week on how there's so many youth, the, the, there's such an acceleration in the trajectory of folks who are, who are now going into hospitals and uh, needing help and psychiatrists and so forth. Uh, is just going up, 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 yeah. you know, and it's, it's, it's almost doubling, mm -hmm. you know, with what was there before, especially right. in this area of suicide. Right. That's, you know, you said eight to 12? Yeah, eight to 12. And they're talking? And they're, yeah. About they're, suicide? Yeah. 
not no longer wanting to be here anymore and we have had a couple of hospitalizations so mm. yeah now are they on medication some are and some and parents have decided that they some for their kids they did not want them on medication okay. so it's it's kind of like half and half okay so um, I know that you're not just sitting there looking at them. Right? <laughs> okay, just close the door. You guys all stay in here. And, yeah. You know, when, no. When, when time runs out, <laughs> I'll open the door. You can go home. You know? I, you know, sometimes I wish we had those those days. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes the employees of the school often think that we are babysitting them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so we, it kind of comes off as like we're, it's glorified babysitting. Mm -hmm. But um, for two, it's a pretty intense, rigorous program for two and a half. So I do two, two and a half hour groups. Okay. So for the first group, it'll be more of our like uh, fourth through six. And then the second group will be our first through third. Mm -hmm. And so the first group, which is our older group. So for two and a half hours, we are teaching them social skills, we're teaching them coping skills, mm. we're teaching them how to manage their frustrations, um, how to ask for help, how to uh, work together with others. Mm -hmm. um, we do a check-in <laughs> every day. Um, and we can talk more about that because yeah. that is related yeah. to the message. We do also a, um, a mindfulness um, portion of the day, which is about 10 to 15 minutes. And I can just explain a little bit yeah. about that. So mindfulness is when you take a moment to be in the present yeah. and just focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. And why is that important? Because when there is, especially a kid, a school age kid now in school, there's a lot going on. You have the social media aspect because they have their computers when they're in school. Um, and then they're trying to hear from their teacher as well. And then you have the, the socialization aspect. So there's just a lot going on. So it's really important, especially to help them focus, that they have a practice of a mindfulness and how, how to, to yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So some steps yeah. in how to do that. Yeah, so that, now our older kids, they do have a hard time with the mindfulness over our younger kids. Um, but I think over time, they're like, okay, I see why this is necessary. I see why I need to take a couple minutes before I start my day. Mm -hmm. um, and they've actually verbalized like, we do this to help us get ready for our day. Mm -hmm. So they, they are understanding the, yeah. it that way. Mm -hmm. Like this is prep work. Yeah. So that yeah. we can do this thing. Yep. So I'm I'm really proud of them. I mean, it's been a year, but we've we've really got in there and did some work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, this is roll up your sleeves. Yeah. Just, it, yeah. Because we, I mean, to be honest, we probably spend a lot of time with them. That's adjacent to the amount of time that their parents spend with them mm. or you know at home right, so exactly. it's almost like we're like another probably more <laughs> probably more too um so so yeah we i think we put we and also it helps that we are motivated and that we we like our jobs mm. we like what we do Amen. so a lot of times you know there is that frustration because we're pouring in so much because mm. we see so much in them mm. Mm -hmm. so, so potential Pot possibilities yeah. so forth yeah so um when you guys go through your day mm -hmm. um the kids are with you yes the whole day the whole day okay so they never go out to another class so i'm sorry let me so the, we have two groups two okay. age groups okay. So the first group will be with us from like 9.30 to like 11.30, and then they will go back to their regular okay, classroom. Okay. And then that second group would come in the afternoon, so they got to be with their classroom in the morning, and then they come with us in the afternoon. So okay. it's nice that we at least get to have like a break and we get to see different kids throughout mm -hmm. the day. So it's not just the same kids for six hours. <laughs> so I've been thinking a lot, you know, pastor's been sharing and, um, you know, it's like, the solution, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, you know, of course you can go to the end of a thing and say, well, this is the solution. Right. Well, I'm sure there's steps uh, yeah. toward the solution. <laughs> yes. and, and so it's not just, you know, you guys didn't just show up one day. It's like, okay, we're here. No. You know, there was a process to even allow right. you 
yeah. to come there because yeah. I, I had kids that were going to Mount Healthy <laughs> mm -hmm. and I don't recall mm -hmm. this program okay. being okay. in place yeah. at all at the yeah. elementary level, okay. middle school level, okay. nowhere. Yeah. I don't recall it being there. Yeah. And if it was there, it wasn't shared. Mm -hmm. And not that they were overly behavioral right. Right. issues, yeah. but, but I know the school had them. Yeah. Had, had yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. I know that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Especially Mount Healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's yeah. everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. So do you recall, like, it was... Have you guys been there for a while? Or? Um, so I want to say for Mount Healthy, I want to say it's been about three, about three years. So okay. we are a fairly newer program. I know the children's home has been around for, I think, a hundred and mm -hmm. so years. Mm -hmm. um, but I think their, I guess their intent now is to make sure that they're reaching as many schools as possible. And I think that was their intention when combining with St. Al's. Mm -hmm. So we have these two major corporations that have come together. And so now we can truly extend our services, especially and like to, to places that are further out now. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I want to say for Mount Healthy, it's only been like a couple years. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you guys would do? Is it only for schools, or is it something that if we talk, if you were to talk to somebody and mm -hmm. say, "Hey, we could do it at a church," or so, is it possible to do it anywhere else? Uh, right now, the locations that we serve is like in a in a school. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a our own campus, okay. so that's more of a more of an intense program where they would be there all day, okay. and then we do have like a preschool where they same thing like we're treating the behavioral issues and then we have a autism center as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So at currently we are not, I don't wanna, don't quote me, yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. currently we are not in like any um, spiritual or relig religious settings. Okay. Um, maybe there's hope for the future that that could, that right. could happen, you know? That's, you know? that's <laughs> future conversation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, seriously. Yeah. So now uh, I wanna back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Know, um, I know you're 28. Yes. <laughs> uh, and it's interesting because I know I've been seeing you probably since you were a toddler mm. uh, or maybe even born. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I recall you going away to school and mm -hmm. you went to Atlanta, mm -hmm. right? And so can you take us a little bit through your journey? Because I know you left here. Yeah. You know, I don't know, about 2012 12. or so. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. And exact then, year. Yes. <laughs> You know, yeah. And so then you went from there somewhere else, you know. And mm -hmm. So um, I guess I could just talk a little, little bit about like how I was brought up, and then we can yeah, get there if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Um, so I was brought up in a single parent household, um, and so that would be my mother who um, raised me. She's a strong black woman, as you. That's Renee Nicholson. <laughs> as you Shout all out know. to mom. She is strong. <laughs> strong, Homie, determined, <laughs> determined, and yes. um, Super consistent. Smart. Yeah. Um, and so growing up, the expectation on me is that to whom much is given, much is required. Okay. And my mom made sure that there was not a need and she also made an intention to put me and expose me to all types of people, okay. or all types of arenas. Um, and yeah, I just, the, as a kid, I had the, all, the best of both, all the worlds. Mm. Um, and, uh, but as I was growing up, there were moments where I wanted to be normal. Mm. And I wanted to do what everybody else did, but I was. Um, Which is what you were considering normal. Consider, yeah, and that's the other thing too. Like, what did normal even mean for me? Like around nine or ten years old, I didn't really know, but I just knew that hmm, this is a lot of pressure. Okay. Um, there's a lot, that, you know, you that could feel the I could feel the expectation. I could feel the responsibility okay. at a younger age. Okay. But around that age time, around eight or nine, my family, we had gone down to Atlanta to Megafest. And um, while we were there, we had swung around to Spelman. And at the time, this is around the summertime, so the students were off campus. And so we you know, couldn't walk on, but the gates were um, closed. And you can see you know, the, the, the label, Spelman College. And I just remember, walking up there and placing my hands on that gate. And ever since then, when I got home, I said, this is where I'm going to be. And this I'm, is as a kid. And this is as a kid. Okay. Um, 
and maybe a lot some of that influence was because of the expectation I could just feel it like mm -hmm. and even when you look through those gates you see that plush green grass mm -hmm. and it just looks like amazing like just excellence take, take, <laughs> take care of, care of. Mm -hmm. so um, from about nine I would say maybe nine or ten from there from that mo moment on my eyes were set on Spelman that was it that was all and um, you know throughout my from that point to high school I worked really hard to um, prepare and I had applied um, my senior year which was in so probably around 2011 I had applied and um, I had got respondents um, about a mission uh, probably after I graduated high school in 2012 in May that I was put on a wait list mm -hmm. And uh, I was so confused because I was like, you know, my mom didn't put me in dance. She didn't put me in tennis. And I way. didn't, I, I went to private school, public school. Um, I didn't been around, like I said, all types of people. I, you know, I had two, you know, tutors to make sure that I was, you know, taking um, AP classes, honors classes to make myself look appealing and shiny to a school like Spelman. Got it. And so I was just confused because I was like, what do you mean? Why am I not, you know, uh, why am I putting, being put on the wait list? So um, immediately from that moment, I think I prayed the most that I had ever in my life. Because mm -hmm. I was like, God, I really want to get into this school. And I've been wanting to get in this school for a very long mm -hmm. time. And um, I would say maybe a week later, I had got a, um, a second communication that I had made it into Spelman. And really? that was after, it was, like I said, a week of praying the most that I had ever- Intense. Intense, <laughs> ever prayed in my life. And also to just back up, I also, my family on my mom's side was just very disciplined and in the doctrine and, um, you know, we grew up as, I would say more non-denominational, but we attended a church um, called the Worldwide House of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not um, unfamiliar to going to church on Saturdays, mm -hmm. the Sabbath, mm -hmm. and we did practice um, or celebrate Jewish feast days and okay. things like that. So, we were yeah, so I was already familiar, and you know, my great grandmother, like just her faith and just her relationship with God held our family for a very long time. So, I just wanted to just note that how did I know how to pray, and why did I think in that moment that would helped me in that moment um, was because that was truly my foundation and how I was brought up. Mm -hmm. And so when I had got the letter from Spelman that I had made it in, of course I was overflowed with joy and all of that. And so um, just fast forwarding my time at school, there were some challenges that I had uh, immediately encountered. Um, for example, I had majored in biology. Mm. And I would, again, back to the expectation, mm. I was going to be a doctor and I was on the pre-med path. And probably around the first couple months of school, um, I, I did not do well. Oh, I did not okay. do well. So I'm just gonna be honest because yeah. I wanna share my testimony. Yeah, um, the first quarter at, at Spelman, I was put on uh, academic probation. I, ha I will not forget the GPA till this day. I had a 1.74 GPA. I, I would say something about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I but, can beyond relate. <laughs> yeah, but back to that expectation, right? That was not acceptable. I got you. Um, and so quickly, I had to come to Jesus moment with my mom as well. Like, you know, what is it? What do, you know? What is it that you want to do? Because this, we can't have this. And so, um, I will never forget. I had ran into a mentor. Um, so I was participating in the Spelman Dance Theater at the time, and he was the director of the program. And he had brought me into his office, and he said, Brianna. I'm here, you know, I'm here to help you, you know, you, I've been, you know, seeing you throughout the, you know, year or so, and I just, you know, I'm here to help. And I was just like, Mr. his name is Mr. Green. So shout out to Mr. Green. So Mr. Green was like, uh, I'm sorry. So I was like, Mr. Green, I'm not happy with this major. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought I was supposed to be a doctor, and, but I'm just not getting this biology thing. <laughs> it's just not, it's, not it's just not it's clicking. Not clicking. Yeah. And he was like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I really love dance and science. And so he was like, okay, well, let's see what's out there. Mm -hmm. And so he went on um, um, on the computer, just typed in dance and science, and 
that's when dance kinesiology had came up and then dance therapy had came up. Mm. And, and immediately in that moment, I said, that's it. That, that that, that's what I'm supposed to be I doing. I heard of it. But yeah, yeah, but, um, but my, my whole college experience, just to kind of go back as well, I mean, there was a lot, I mean, just the world of academia in past, um, I guess, a higher learning, yeah. so higher education. Um, I mean, there, it's just, it really challenges your being and like who you are. Do you really Absolutely. know who you Absolutely. are? And um, I found myself in moments where I had to defend myself and stand up for myself. And because you're learning all of this new information and it really is developing a different identity from who you were when you were in your mom's house Absolutely. or your, you know, your father's house and when you were growing up. So, um, Again, back to that 1.74, that truly, like, just put me, you know, sat me down because, I, you know, that was not my typical um, uh, production, if you will, you know, like you know, I wasn't producing, like yeah, performing. Right. Um, so, um, so in that moment, I was like, okay, we, <laughs> we got to get it together. Um, but I will say, you know, um, Spellman was a enriching experience. I definitely encourage any any especially our people of color to attend especially black people to attend hbcu um and it has made me who i am today yeah so that identity piece mm -hmm. you know which is critical because we're saying and i'm sure in your in your classroom yeah um this issue of who am i yeah you know not that it's overtly mm -hmm. spoken right but it's definitely seen yeah you know that there's a search mm -hmm. for who am i right you know and so what am i connecting the dots to right you said you had a mentor yeah you know you got a mom mm -hmm. you mentioned a great grandma yeah right right i know your grandma yeah right? Okay. <laughs> right. so you yeah have, you have a support system mm -hmm. yeah. around you absolutely right yeah and you have a grounding in not just church, but right. in the Lord. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So everybody doesn't have that. And yeah. You know. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, so I just will say, um, like, what could? So yeah. I'm I'm aware that everyone doesn't have that, and I'm I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for that because there was a moment where, I guess you could say, it was a why me moment. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, you know, and I think back to that, pre so if we want to talk about the, um, the baggage or the burdens yeah. the pastor has been talking about, the, um, one of those bags is um, the pressure, yeah. and I think if we want to kind of, how I would like to kind of shift mine is, it, it is a form of um, rejection, yeah. but not feeling good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but yeah, you're right, everybody, that my story is not everybody's story, but I will say that I too, even, you know, what it looks like on the outside is, you know, um, there was that support there and, you know, you made it in the, I will say, number one HBCU, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, you graduated, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but there were also these challenges of, who am I? Am I good enough? Um, and um, I just want to quit because I want to be normal. Mm -hmm. And I don't want this pressure the anymore. The pressure of having to be yeah. or having to do or be at a certain level. Be at a certain level. Okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah. a CD is not really good enough. Yeah. Not, 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 no, in, not, not, in, not <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, so there's levels. There's to, levels. To, to, yeah. To everything. Yeah. So I'm thinking about you know this identity piece. Mm -hmm. At your age, mm -hmm. you know you've gone through a journey. You know right. we have a lot of people that's viewing us. Yeah. That may be 60, 70 years old. Mm -hmm. Some are 15, 20 years old. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And some are just getting started. You know we have a lot of folks who are graduating from high school, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. navigating college is not very easy. No. Even though it's a, it's a celebrated moment, yeah. you know, parents really want their children to go to college. Yeah. Um, some don't really know what that means. Mm. Yeah. When they when they leave that house mm -hmm. and they literally go away from home yeah. and they stay somewhere else. Yeah. 
you were a nice distance away. Right. Yeah, you had yeah. family in Atlanta or not. Yeah. You know, but you were away from Cincinnati. Yeah. Slash mm -hmm. Columbus. Right. You know, so you're down in Atlanta mm -hmm. making it. Right. You know, and right. it required at a young age, 18, 19 years mm -hmm. old, make some decisions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. you saw the grade. Yes. Right? But before yeah. the grade happened, you yeah. were in the class. Yeah, right. So right. you're sitting in a yeah. class before the grade mm -hmm. and you're like, this ain't going well. <laughs> yeah. It's really not going well. Yeah. So yeah. this is that's just one area. Right? Yeah. The right. grade piece is one area. One area. Right. So if we switch to and I'm not trying to get in your business, <laughs> but, you know, if you were to switch to, say, people have relationships. Right. Mm -hmm. And I told my son this. You have a relationship, say, with our neighbor, mm -hmm. you know, and you grew up with him. Yeah. I said, but you, depending on where you go in life, you may be away from that person for 20 years, 15 right. years, 30 years. Right. You may never reconnect. Right. Literally. You right. know, you just right. grew up and you were in middle school or elementary right. school, but then yeah. you went on, did your thing. Yeah. I've gone on and done my thing. Mm -hmm. So I have no connection. Right. So now I go away at college. Mm hmm. And if I don't have elementary kids here that I right. went to school with, right. these are all brand new people. Yeah. What's my, I gotta connect. Mm -hmm. So I, I gotta develop some relationships. Right. I'm not, I can't, I can't just be on an island and yeah. isolate it. Yeah. So how do I navigate that? Yeah. And that could also get into the, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not enough. Yeah. I'm not in a sorority. I'm not in right. a fraternity. I'm not in a, you know, what's yeah. my connection? You yeah. know, so I just wonder if you could talk. Yeah. I mean, you had um, a roommate. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which is interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, so um, I could speak to uh, my roommate, the, that roommate connection. Yeah, like that's the first time I, so I was only child, not just living in a single parent, but I, yeah. I was the only child in that household. So it was just me and my mom. So right. I didn't have siblings in the house. So I didn't really experience that, you know, cohabitation that was, mm -hmm. you know, that was taking place. So, um, so yeah, that, that experience, um, was you know very interesting you know i had my roommate she just happened to be from jamaica so there's also some a cultural difference with you know with that as well um but i think i mean like i like i said god has definitely been with me the entire time but i think that um you know that developing that relationship that really just helped me understand differences and um that it's o that it it's okay that we had differences and um, to take it a day at a time mm -hmm. <laughs> and to mm -hmm. recog and uh, I learned what it's like to live with a different being and um, we had different um, wake up times and sleep times and you know you have to navigate that of like okay so she likes to sleep during the day and I like to sleep at night time and so and I think also too like it really helped develop my communication yeah. with another you know a person that you didn't grow up with and so um, I mean I loved my first roommate she was awesome um, you know we had some really good times and she um, she taught me a lot of different um, Jamaican words, they speak Patois. So, you know, there, it was like a, it was an enriching experience. It was a different experience. And, you know, I don't think we ever even had, you know, any drama, mm -hmm. you know, but I think um, we told, if just going back to what we teach to the, to the kids is one of the bigger, biggest um, character strengths that we teach to is perspective. And so I think just, when you're going off to college, it's really important that you are open to, to new perspectives mm -hmm. and um, also to not be stuck in your way or your perspective is the one, the best way or the correct way and the only way. Got it. Um, and I think that, like I said, me and my roommate, we were able to be um, successful because we were open to each other. And, um, you know, like I said, it just, it was awesome. We had, it, we, it was great. And then also just in terms of meeting, you know, people from the South, that was a different experience as well. Um, and I actually loved it because people from the South, they're, I mean, they're, they're um, I don't know how you want to explain it, but nicer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There was more of that Southern um, hospitality, hospitality yeah. and I had never experienced that. Well, I'm not saying never, but you know, we're more of the Midwest and mm -hmm. there's just a, a demeanor of people from the mid Midwest <laughs> and there's a demeanor from people who yeah. from the South. And so that was also um, very open, very open and receiving. <laughs> yeah. And like 
you know, they um, just the people there are like, you know, do you need anything? If I was stuck on the road, they would come stop. Strangers don't even know me. They would stop on the road and like help me. Um, so yeah, I, I've learned a lot, but I would just say for my my advice or suggestion would be to to be open and to um, embrace others' perspective and. Um, and it's okay if you don't agree mm -hmm. with everybody. You don't have to, but right. just um, just embracing the perspective of another, of another person. You know, as uh, pastors kind of going through this whole series, it's been interesting because there's so many aspects, mm -hmm. right? You know, our lives are not the same. Yeah. You know, we have come from different backgrounds and some folks have very traumatic mm -hmm. upbringings, mm -hmm. you know, uh, living arrangements, parents, no yeah. parents, whatever, all these different situations. Yeah. And so when you get into this checking in yeah. piece, you know, and I think it, it requires some maturity and, and some availing of yourself mm -hmm. and humility, you know, um, but you know, as a younger person, yeah. you know, as you not only went to college, you know, leaving home, leaving college, going on to uh, another school, mm -hmm. I think you moved to Philadelphia, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then the work world, <laughs> right? Yeah. And now, yeah. I mean, you having to be responsible mm -hmm. along the way, right. as you said, you've run into some obstacles, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. whatever it is that you may or may not have had in your baggage, typically somebody got something, something. right? Yeah. It's yeah. just whether it's been identified, right. Right. and do you bring it up front, right. you know, or do you just kind of leave it back there and yeah. I'll just carry it right. till I'm 100. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I never deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. is there anything along the way so far that has caused you to say, you know what, I got to deal with this. I really, I really need to deal with this. Yeah, I think that it, you can talk about. Um, so I can talk about my grad school experience and just so I went to Drexel University in um, Philadelphia, and um, the major was dance movement therapy and counseling. And so when I say this is probably the most trying years of my life, two years of my life, um, it really just challenged, like I said, my being, my identity. I was I've always been a dancer, mm -hmm. but never a therapist or a counselor, never have been, you know, in that role officially. And, um, you know, there were moments where, you know, I was challenged on, you know, my ability as a younger person in a master's program mm -hmm. by um, my teachers or professors. You know, um, so for example, you know, you're young, you might not get everything, you know, you might not be able to fully um, handle this job, this profession until maybe 10, 15 years down the road. And I would take offense to certain things like that because I was like, well, I, you know, at the time, so when I entered the program, I was about 22 which is still fairly young, but you know, I had had, I felt like I had life experience. Mm -hmm. I was like, what are you talking about? Like right. I didn't been through some things, yeah, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, so, um, but I kept hearing that, that theme of like, you know, um, you don't have an ex experience yet. So basically um, your ability to perform, mm -hmm. back to this, you know, expectation or perform, yeah, we don't expect, you know, you to have, you know, you to be able I to handle it. this situation. I, I'm, I'm hearing what's yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So that has been a theme that I have struggled with for a while. Uh, and then just going back to that not feeling good enough or not feeling confident in myself. And then that um, reflects, like, my self-esteem. I got you. And so, you know, I would there would be a lot of internal battles that I would have about, like, you know, I, I know that I have the ability. I know that I, you know, have the experience. I know that, um, you know, I'm intelligent, you know, enough. But I had, I have run into moments where, because I'm not old enough, mm -hmm. I'm not capable to do. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, so, um, so that was like one of the one of the major things that I encountered in grad school, and in. A professional world, if you will. Um, 
and um, yeah, it really, it really tore me down. Mm. And um, you know, I did struggle, and almost to the point where I didn't graduate. And um, yeah, that was a, it was, a, it was, that was a dark time for me. And so, but I went back to what I knew yeah. would would work. Yeah. And um, I, I fasted for three days, uh, drinking water. I couldn't do a no. I was like, I need something, Lord, to get me through. And on that third day, I was told that I would be able to graduate on time. Mm -hmm. um, but just going back to a little bit, so um, basically what had happened was I was in a program where I had to do a thesis, and I was really not feeling confident enough to complete the project. And there were many obstacles that were going against me. My um, thesis advisor, my academic advisor, they were kind of pouring some negativity into me and not feeling like I was capable enough Jesus. to do the project. And so, you know, time was running out and I had to defend my thesis before I could graduate. And my thesis advisor had um, basically ended the relationship right before I was supposed to graduate. Um, wow. Yeah, <laughs> so that, when I say that I was shook yeah. to my core, because yeah. going back to the expectation, right. I had to graduate on time. Right. Because if I didn't graduate on time, that would bring up failure. I got you, okay. Um, but in that same moment, I had done the work, so I felt like I, I deserved to graduate mm -hmm. on time. And so, like I said, I had fasted, and on the third day, I was given communication that I could graduate on time. Mm -hmm. And I just had to work through the summer to finish up those last um, tasks. And um, yeah, and I became a therapist at 24. Hey, Amen. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking about. See, that's, that's yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah. When you think about that, you know, that was a struggle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that. <laughs> Typically, folks will give up mm -hmm. or quit. Yeah, you know because typically that's too much. And yeah. you, again, you're out of town. Mm -hmm. another, again, another city, <laughs> yeah. another yeah. state. You're yeah. in another place. Yeah. You're dealing with people that aren't there, not family. Yeah, right. Right. And they're pushing you back. Yeah. And this this identity piece mm -hmm. of uh, or the area of more than enough or right. not enough, yeah. not enough, I don't have what it takes, mm -hmm. you know, the rejection potentially, the, yeah. you know, potentially failure, yeah. you know, and not fitting, you know, it, mm -hmm. and, and someone kind of putting you down, yeah. you know, saying so you're not old enough, right. you know, maybe you'll get it, maybe <laughs> yeah. almost like quit, come right. back, come mm -hmm. back when you're 30, yeah. you know, exactly. or something like that. Right. So. You know, I told Vernon, we sat here with Vernon, and I had an experience with a teacher that told me, you know, you should quit college mm. because I don't really know why you're here. Mm. You know, you're actually wasting your time. Mm, right? Wow. And it, I never yeah. forgot it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That was 40 years ago, right? Yeah. I never forgot yeah. it. And, mm -hmm. and I got a chance to go back to school. Mm -hmm. I quit school and went back. Okay. And, and I did finish. But awesome. it was yeah. just interesting to see him mm -hmm. again because he was still there. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and, well, yeah. Know. Yeah. So anyway, that, that whole piece piece, you know, as people matriculate through college or they go through life, yeah. they begin to run into areas where, you know, folks can be nasty. Mm -hmm. you know, people, you know, everybody's not a believer. Right. And oh, even yeah. believers mm -hmm. don't always say mm -hmm. encouraging, yeah. upbuilding, yeah. encouraging, life-giving things to yeah. individuals. So um, you have to be able to navigate that, deal with mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. be able to stand, you know, and just me thinking, you know, the support that you've had yeah. your life yeah. through, mm -hmm. say you were dealing with all of this mm -hmm. without it. Yeah. That, you know, what you said your mom exposed you to, mm -hmm. even the excellence piece, you yeah. know, and being able to push yourself and yeah. go through things, you know, uh, there's a process, right? Yeah. Um, but take it all I, away. Yeah. Take it away, you know. Not that you go back and say, mm -hmm. well, I don't know if I'd have made it. I, you know, don't know yeah. for sure. But right. it was a support mm -hmm. enough, mm -hmm. you know, that you dealt with that. Yeah. You were able to keep on going. Yeah, for sure. So that's what we're really talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally. And, and see, you're checking in. I'd have to assume you checked in with your mom. Yeah. Or, so, yeah. 
Not to cut you off, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go back to that. So yeah, a way that I check in, my outlet, my to get through to the next day is to check in with my mom. Mm -hmm. To check in now more than ever is to check in with my grandma. Because mm -hmm. um, that's how that's how I recoup. That's how I refuel okay. is to get that out to, to another person. Mm -hmm. um, because I find when you keep all of those thoughts in, you're basically a prisoner mm -hmm. to that. And it just, and over time, you know, your thoughts, the issues, the battles, they get bigger. And so if you don't have an outlet or if you don't have a way to release, then um, it could, you know, um, cause some further issues. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so mentally, a way that I check in is through my mom and my grandma, my family, or my friends. I think my friends are like, they often say like, oh, you, you like to talk a lot. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I need to get it out because if I don't, then um, we might have an issue. Yeah, we might have um, issue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> little pastor crack jokes yeah. on, we have a situation. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't want to have a situation. Yeah, so yeah, right. one of the ways I check in is, is, to, is to talk it out. Um, and. My mom sometimes is like, okay, you didn't repeat it yourself a couple times. And I'm like, yeah, I need to because I gotta, I gotta say it out. I gotta get those thoughts because, um, like I said, if I don't, it's 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 just gonna remain in my mind and it's gonna ruminate and I'm gonna think about it over and over and over again. And it could cause some procrastination. Mm -hmm. It could stop my growth. It could. Um, yeah, it could just cause those those things. Um, but I wanted to save this one part if I could. Yeah, sure. um, so also a part of our what we do every day at um, Mount Healthy, um, our social skills group is so for after we do our mindfulness, we do a check in. And so how the check in um, goes is you say how you feel and you say um, what zone. And so this is, daily. this is a daily thing. And then you say, why are you feeling that way? And so um, just real quick, what, a, what um, it's the zones of regulation. So we have like a blue zone, green zone, yellow zone, red zone. So green zone is more of our homeostasis balanced. Yellow zone is our like little loss of control. We might be feeling anxious, worried, frustrated, irritated, okay. so forth. And then you have your red zone, which is like you're angry, you're out of control, you need to use a, a coping skill immediately. Mm -hmm. And then you have the blue zone, which is kind of like depressed, sad, low energy, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of times we might start with the zone first because it may be, especially with our younger kids, it may be a little harder for them to hone in on exactly what, where they are and how they're feeling in that moment. Um, and then it's important for you to say, give a reasoning why. Because um, a lot of times when we are feeling a certain way, we have body cues or we have hints that, you know, they give us information when we're feeling a certain way. And so, for example, if I was feeling um, anxious, I might say I'm feeling anxious because like I got, I'm thinking about what's happening yeah. after this or um, yeah. There, yeah, something like that. Um, and so it just kind of gives you like, what is the word I'm looking for? It just gives you like a recording of like, okay, how, when I'm Check feeling this way, uh, yeah, yeah, like a thermometer as well. Like when usually when I'm feeling this way, mm -hmm. this is what's happening. Okay. Um, and so I do a daily check-in with myself. I actually check in with the kids every day because okay. I want them to know that we're just as much a part of the group as they are. Mm -hmm. And also we are modeling, a part of the program is we are modeling behaviors for them as well every, every day, Absolutely. all day. Awesome. So, um, so I check in with them every day. So that's actually been a saving grace for me every day is I'm doing it as a part of my job, but also for myself as well. Mm -hmm. That's just wonderful. Man. Yeah, it's actually powerful. I'm yeah. very grateful that you actually were willing to sit down and yeah. share, you know, because I had no clue <laughs> that, that was kind of part of the whole yeah. background and what you were into. Yeah. So um, Zion, I pray and hope that there was something that was said tonight that you actually heard that you could share, but it also meant something to you because God is speaking in different ways, you know. He's speaking through Brianna, he's speaking through others as we sit down and have these times of talks and chats. 
Um, but it's really touching certain areas. You know, people go through life and they deal with certain situations. It's just how do they process it? How do they deal with it? And God is trying to take us to a place of wholeness. So we bless God for this time that we have together. In Jesus' name, shalom. The sign of your